Sa episode nito, makikita natin kung meron bang koneksyon yung pagbabike, yung haba ng oras sa pagbabike, dun sa waistline o yung bewang ng biker. Si Paul David ay isang magandang example nito. At least mga 3 to 4 hours lang siya nagbabike per week. Pero mahilig din siya mag low cost body building. Makakatulong kaya sa kanya yung pagbabike? Makakatulong din kaya ito sa atin? Ang gusto natin malaman, nakakaliit pa ng bewa ang biking. Para masagot yung mga tanong na yan, gagamit tayo ng correlational statistic. Nga pala. Kaya gagamit tayo niyan kasi na makiusapan tayo ng isang guro, isang principal sa eskwelahan na pinpunta ng anak ko na kung maaari gumawa tayo ng video about statistics, correlational statistics. Since naituro ko naman to nung college, 8 years ako nagturo sa malalaki university tulad ng Dela Salle University Las Parinas, St. Jude College, Our Lady of Fatima University. Sige, subukan natin gamitan ng correlational statistics kung may relasyon niya yung oras ng pagbabike at yung laki ng kanyang waistline. Samahan niyo ako. Unang-una, problem. Tinanong natin kanina, nakakatulong ba ang oras ng biking, ang haba ng oras ng biking sa pagpapalipis o di kaya pagpapaliit, pagpapapayat ng ating waistline o yung bewang? Kung yan ang tatanungin mo sa isang researcher, ang sasabihin niya sa'yo, kailangan ang tanong mo ay statistically uh, valid. Yung bang masasagot ito ng statistics. So, ang tamang tanong para maging specific yung tanong natin ay ito. Imbis na sabihin nakakatulong ba sa pagpapapayan ng biking, ang tatanungin natin, is there any significant relationship between, between time spent in biking and waistline? Sa Tagalog, meron bang anumang makakahulugang ugnayan sa pagitan ng oras na ginugugol sa pagbibisikleta at sa pagsukat at sa sukat ng bewang. Ngayon, kung meron kang problem, kailangan meron ka rin hypothesis. Tandaan nyo, una problem, pangalawa hypothesis. Ang hypothesis, dalawa yan. May tinatawag na alternative hypothesis, tapos may tinatawag na null hypothesis. Yung alternative hypothesis, ito yung hypothesis na gusto mong patunayan. Ito yung alternatibo. Ngayon, since ang tanong natin, eh, meron bang kahul- makahulog ang kugnayan sa pagitan ng oras na ginugugod sa pagbibisikleta at sa sukat ng bewang, ang alternative hypothesis natin ang sinasabi nito, mayroon bang makahulog, mayroon makahulog ang kugnayan sa pagitan ng oras na ginugugod sa pagbibisikleta at pagsukat ng bewang. Tapos meron tayong null hypothesis sinasabi namang walang makahulugang ugnayan sa pagitan ng oras na ginugugol sa pagbibisikleta at sa sukat ng bewang. Kung mapansin niyo simple lang yan eh. Yung alternative ang sinasabi, meron. Yung null sinasabi, wala. May ugnayan, walang ugnayan. So ganun lang yun. Problem, hypothesis. Ngayon sa data gathering, ang ginawa ko dito sa maliit na research na to, Nag-survey ako via Facebook Messenger. Tapos tinanong ko yung mga kaibigan kong bikers, yung mga recreational bikers, yung mga bike to work, yung mga matagal nang hindi nagbabike, kung ano na yung sukat ng bewang nila. So ito, marami akong sagot na natanggap. Tapos tinanong ko rin kung ilang oras sila nagbabike sa loob ng isang linggo. Pagkatapos doon, nilagay ko yung data sa statistics dito sa Microsoft Excel. Tapos ginamitan ko ng Pearson Product Moment Correlation Coefficient. Huwag kayong matakot dun sa formula na yan. Hindi yan mahirap. Sa so, likely lang ang sasabihin natin eh, ginamitan natin ng Pearson's R. Napakadali lang yan. Ilang segundo lang yan sa Excel. Pagkatapos ng data gathering at saka statistical analysis, ang fifth step natin ay decision and interpretation. Dito, titignan natin kung dun ba sa alternative hypothesis pupunta yung sagot o dun ba sa null hypothesis. Tapos titignan natin ito sa pamamagitan ng pagtingin sa critical value, pag saka tayo gumawa ng desisyon, titignan natin yung kalakasan ng relasyon nila, kung enough ba ito para makapag-conclude tayo, at saka tayo gagawa ng conclusion na may relasyon o wala, at saka ng recommendation. Okay, so bago tayo, bago natin isa-isahin itong pitong steps na to, uulitin ko ulit. Una, problem. 
pangalawa hypothesis, pangatlo data gathering, pangapat statistical analysis, panglima decision interpretation, decision and interpretation, nam pang pang anim conclusion at pang pito recommendation. All right, ngayon naman papakita natin kung paano compute yung Pearson product moment correlation coefficient. Uh, huwag kayo matakap dun sa mahabang word na yun. Let's just call it Pearson's R. Pero yun yung full full name of the statistic. Pearson product moment correlation coefficient. So, first thing you have to do is you have to tally your data. And you have to come up with labels. Now, first label sa A1 is respondent number. Remember, I promised dun sa mga respondents namin na we would be confidential about their names. So, we're putting in respondent number one. Tapos yung kanyang hours of biking ay 9 hours per week. At yung kanyang waistline in inches is 29 uh, inches. So, ganun din si respondent number two. Yung kanyang hours biking ay 6 hours per week. Yung kanyang waistline in inches ay 24. Now, papakita ko lang kung paano i-compute yung Pearson's R. Napakadali. Sabi ko it could be done in seconds. So, here it is. Okay? Just click on equals. Type in Pearson. Okay, doesn't matter kung capital or lowercase. And then open parenthesis after the word Pearson. And then uh, select the first column of the data. Okay, from respondent number 1 to respondent number 18. Then come up with a comma. Pwede mong dito i-edit. Okay, comma. I'm sorry. Kailangan maka-select muna siya. Okay, pagka yung formula is... Uh, okay, after the open parenthesis, type in, select the first column of data, then after that, a comma, and then the second column of data, and then uh, close parenthesis. Press enter. Diba? It took only a few seconds. Uh, 0 0.49966. Let's do that again, okay? Just type in equals, type in Pearson, open parenthesis. Uh, select the first column of data. Uh, after selecting the first column of data, put in a comma, and then the second column of data, and then select data afterwards, uh, close parenthesis, and then click enter. So, with that pass, we have already computed yung mahabang formula na yon ng Pearson's R. And our results are negative 0 0.4996 or 0 0.4997 kung i uh, carry over natin yung uh, number. Uh, so, anong ibig sabihin ito? First, we need to check yung ating tinatawag na uh, critical values for, for Pearson's correlation coefficient. I need to remember uh, sa, sa mga students na kikinig dito, if you would be computing for statistic, usually, meron yung critical table. Uh, meron critical values for T table, may critical values for F table, tapos meron tayong tinatawag na critical values for R table or Pearson's correlation coefficient. So, meron ditong hinihingi, DF at saka yung proportion uh, significance level. First, deal natin yung DF. What is DF for Pearson product moment correlation coefficient? Here we can see it's N minus 2. Okay? It's N minus 2. N is for the number of respondents, minus 2. So, let's put in a marker. So, this is R computed. And then, we have uh, DF. N minus 2, that's 18. Dahil meron tayong 18 respondents, minus 2. So, that would be 16. Okay? So, our DF is 16. Now, sa, that gives us an idea na dun sa critical values for Pearson's correlation coefficient, we would look for the number or for the row that points to 16. Okay, ito yung row pointing to 16. Now, dito naman sa dalawang row na to, proportion in one tail and proportion in two tails, I want you to understand that in statistics, we make decisions based on the uh, novelty of the statement of the problem. Kapag ka yung problem is something we don't know the results of, for example, uh, the number of uh, the, the length of headache uh, side effects of COVID-19 vaccines, hindi natin alam yon. So we would be studying that based on proportion in one tail if ever we would be asked to compute about it. Pero if we'll be studying something na alam na natin, for example, uh, nutrition and intelligence quotient, 
that would be in proportion in two tails. Then, alam natin, uh, the better eater would have more chances of developing brain cells. So, that would be two tails. Or studying and intelligence quotient, that would be two tails. Kasi nga, uh, that's more difficult. So, yung pinakaiba nila, it's easier to reject a null hypothesis in a one tail. And it's more difficult to reject uh, a null hypothesis in two tails. And how about the mga 0 0.50, 0 0.20? This would be significance level or alpha level. Some books call it alpha level. It only tells us how many percentage of probability our uh, confidence would be put on sa results natin. And the usual alpha level or confidence level or significance level is 0 0.05. That's the usual. That's the standard for educational research and also for uh, social science research. So, we have a DF of 16 and we have a proportion in two tails 0 0.05. The value that we have to check is 0 0.4683. Ang tawag dyan ay critical value of R. Liting ko ah, critical value of R. So, R and then open close parenthesis, critical that's uh, 0. Point, uh, balikan natin yon. 0 0.4683 4683 Okay, so we will now uh, double check Is negative 0 0.4996 greater than 0 0.4683? Kasi you can only accept an alternative hypothesis or reject a null hypothesis if the critical value is lower than the computed value The computed value should be greater than Pero yung computed value natin is in the negative Take note, both in P-test, F-test, and also in Pearson's R, the values, the negative values, the positive and negative signages before the number does not mean anything but only the direction of data. So, 0 .4, 0 0.4996 is still greater than positive 0 0.4683. Negative 0 0.4996 is greater than 0 0.4683. 683. So, anong decision natin ngayon? Our decision would be to accept accept the null hypothesis. Ah, I'm sorry. Accept, I'm sorry. Accept the alternative hypothesis. Alright? So, ano yung uh, alternative hypothesis natin? We already said kanina, uh, our alternative hypothesis is that there is a significant relationship between hours of biking and um, measurement of waistline or, or waistline size or waist, uh, waistline measures. So our conclusion would be something like this. Uh, we would say that uh, hours of biking, hours of biking uh, is related with, uh, with waistline. Waistline size or the waistline measures. Okay, ang ang kagandahan dito sa Pearson compared with other correlational statistics is that it's able to tell us some strength of correlation, not whether it's significant or not. Because in our case, it's already significant. Notice that negative 0.499. If you would go to another table, this is called the uh, strength of correlation table. You would see that 0.499. Uh, 6 0 0.4996 is in the moderate correlation. Okay, nandito siya, moderate correlation. What it means is that um, moderate effort on biking is related to moderate growth, uh, moderate uh, improvement or lowering of the waistline size. So we can say that it's moderately correlated. So with that, we can recommend Dahil nga, it's, it's, we, we only know that it's moderately correlated. We don't know if it's highly or strongly correlated or very strongly correlated. So we would only recommend moderate biking for improving waistline size. Alright? So improving meaning to say slimmer, uh, filled with more muscles, union. Okay? That would be our recommendation. Our recommendation. Okay. Ilang final notes nga pala bago ko tapusin tong video na to. 
unang una pag Pearson star ang gagamitin mo or point by serial correlation coefficient palagi meron siyang positive or negative correlation yung positive or negative correlation it simply says yung direction of relationship pag positive ibig sabihin linear ang relationship niya ibig sabihin pag tumaas yung isang variable tataas din yung isang variable parang presyo ng gasolina at saka pamasahe. Pag tumaas ang presyo ng gasolina, tumataas ang pamasahe. That's a linear relationship. Ngayon, pag negative yung correlation, it means that the relationship is inverse. Inverse meaning to say, yung isang variable tataas, tapos yung isang variable bababa. Uh, a good example of inverse relationship would be itong study natin. The more biking there is in the moderate level, the more... Uh, the less would be the waistline size of the biker in the moderate level. Now, pag co correlation ang ginagamit natin, it's important to take note that correlation is not causation. Ibig sabihin, uh, smoking kills, uh, smoking kills and smoking causes cancer. That's causation. Talaga namang napatunayan yan. Pero, correlation is not a strong enough statistic to finalize a relationship as a cost and effect relationship it merely measures association between two variables kung ang relationship ay uh, nasa 0.6 to 1.0 that would be a strong very strong and perfect correlation kapag ganyan na yung relationship we can think of a cost and effect relationship but just to be able to finalize na talagang cause and effect in relationship, we have to change the study from a correlational study to an experimental or at least quasi-experimental study para maging cause and effect relationship yung ating conclusion. Now, marami pang mga iba't ibang klase ng correlational statistics. Merong chi-square test of association, chi-square chi test of relationship, merong point by serial correlation coefficient, may Spearman's Raw, may Spearman's Rank, at meron marami pang iba. Kahit nga sa scattergram or sa scatterplot using Excel, malalaman mo na kung may relationship. Alright, so that's it. God bless you and goodbye.